He was America's media mogul. He was known as the Chief, a newspaper giant, politician, and national celebrity. His house is now a California historic monument, as well as a U.S. landmark. His existence was rife with competition, controversy, and scandal. This is the legacy of William Randolph Hearst, America's journalistic inspiration. San Francisco, April 29th, 1863. A proud mother and father welcomed their first and only child, a spirited little boy, into the world. Born to George Hearst, a mining millionaire soon to be California senator, and Phoebe Apperson Hearst, William had experiences that few children could boast of. The youth attended numerous private schools across the country, as well as setting sail on a trip to Europe at the age of 10. It isn't any surprise then that Hearst developed his lavish tastes from childhood. When he reached the age of 16, Hearst enrolled in St. Paul's Preparatory School in Concord, New Hampshire. From there he went on to Harvard, where he thrived in journalism as editor of the Harvard Lampoon. This was the point when he, now very much a man, first exhibited signs of a future as a publishing tycoon. Hearst's drive for publishing fame had always been encouraged by his father. George had been operating a paper known as the San Francisco Examiner, but with little coming out of it, he turned it over to his ambitious son. Hearst did not disappoint, transforming the Examiner into the most entertaining and clever daily on the Pacific Coast. Yet, despite Hearst's notoriety as an up-and-coming media phenomenon, the editor would not be satisfied until he cornered the most sophisticated of newspaper markets, New York City. The young magnate's plans for expansions were much bigger than just one city. Hearst envisioned himself running a chain of newspapers that would share content, maximizing profit and elevating him into national fame. He soon acted on this goal, purchasing the New York Journal in 1895. As the chief continued to add to his newspaper acquisitions, Hearst was eyeing more recognition, but in order to reach the top, he had to directly attack his childhood idol, publishing great Joseph Pulitzer. It was clear that competition between Pulitzer and Hearst for the American public was going to be brutal. Hearst would reduce his price and Pulitzer would match it. The younger retaliated by offering higher salaries and positions to Pulitzer's New York World staff. It worked. By 1897, Hearst's two New York papers had bested his rival with a combined circulation of 1.5 million. Journalism's newest champion won that infamous circulation war by fearlessly taking advantage of America's conflict with Spain, printing papers in the masses, molding lies into half-truths, and sensationalizing stories with striking headlines to attract readers. This media strategy, referred to as yellow journalism, originated from Pulitzer and Hearst publishing battle. Hearst is well known at this period for telling one of his photographers, you furnish the pictures, I'll furnish the war. He also stated that his journalism of action represented the final state in the evolution of the modern newspaper, which isn't inaccurate, considering his tactics are widely used in the press today. At the beginning of the 20th century, Hearst had the wealth and the public image. The one thing he didn't possess was a wife. That changed, however, in 1903 with his marriage to Millicent Wilson, a New York vaudeville performer. She bore him five sons, but that didn't seem enough to keep the couple from drifting apart in the early 1920s. A major reason for this split was Marion Davies. She was a beautiful actress, 34 years his junior, whose film career Hearst actively promoted. Disillusioned by her husband's infidelity, Millicent separated from Hearst, but never divorced him, as it was against her morals. Free from his wife's presence, Hearst and Davies lived together until his death. Hearst always needed to be in control, whether it was in his personal or business life. Always aspiring to live up to his hype, he looked at his father's senatorial career as something to emulate. This spurred a period of Hearst's life that would not only reflect his most passionate dreams, but his greatest disappointments as well. In 
In 1902, her stability to destroy reputations, advance newspaper agenda, and initiate rumor-based journalism had no equal. Wishing to enhance his authority, he dived into politics, running for mayor of New York as well as governor. After winning an election to the House of Representatives in 1902 and 1904, the chief hoped to eventually become president, but protests from voters and colleagues ended his political career. Disheartened, Hearst turned his attention back to his media empire, expanding into cities like Chicago, Boston, and Los Angeles. However, more misfortune came with the Great Depression and, in 1941, Orson Welles. Welles, a rising Hollywood director, came out with a film called Citizen Kane, in which he played the title role. The film was about the ups and downs of a newspaper millionaire whom he based on Hearst. This ignited the fury of his real-life model. Hearst extended his power as far as he could, but he did not succeed in shutting the film down. Yet, this failure does not diminish Hearst's legacy. Despite Wells, one in every four Americans still read a Hearst newspaper. The mogul owned 31 papers, six magazines, and a newsreel company to execute his propaganda. The chief was aging, though. In the latter 1940s, Hearst retreated to his mansion in San Simeon, California. Called Hearst Castle, it was a project he and architect Julia Morgan had constantly been building onto since 1919. Built on a hill overlooking the coast, Hearst Castle is still around today, with 165 rooms and 127 acres, including a zoo. Throughout the years, Hearst entertained scores of celebrities there, such as Cary Grant, Charles Lindbergh, Joan Crawford, and Winston Churchill. It was this setting, inspired by the European architecture that he loved as a kid, where Hearst spent the majority of his remaining years, primarily with close friends and family. On August 14, 1951, William Randolph Hearst died at the age of 88, accomplishing what few publishers have. Hearst set an unforgettable precedent for modern investigative journalism. The press would be fundamentally different, and stories might not be so scandalous and newsworthy if not for the king of the yellow journalism. This is William Randolph Hearst's story, not to be forgotten by reporters, Hollywood, or the general American public anytime soon.